I treat a lot of patients with mitral valve disease and they often ask me how we make an assessment at the time of surgery about the adequacy of the mitral valve repair that we perform and how we know that it's going to give us a long-term solution. In other words, that it's going to be durable into the long term. Well, let me talk about the anatomy of the mitral valve first. The, anat the anatomy of the mitral valve is very simple. The mitral valve is made up of two leaflets that open and close, open and close, open and close like this. Now, here's the ventricle, the big chamber of the heart that pumps blood around the body. And every time it squeezes, the mitral valve closes. Every time the, the ventricle relaxes, the mitral valve opens. The blood comes from the lungs to the ventricle. As it pumps, it goes around the body. Now, the reason why the mitral valve doesn't just turn back on itself is because the strings called the cordy attach the edges of the leaflet to the inside of the ventricle. And so it's a perfect unity. And in fact, a lot of surgeons regard the mitral valve, the cords, the muscles into which the cords attach in the ventricle as one big, very important physiological structure. And one without the other doesn't work very well. If you cut the mitral valve out, the ventricle will swell. If the ventricle swells, the mitral valve separation doesn't work well. Very much integrated together in terms of the way they work. Fascinating physiology. Now, the commonest problem that we have with the mitral valve is when one of these strings break. And it's often on what we call the posterior leaflet. And what happens is this. Boom. So one of the leaflets is turning the wrong way. And what we need to do is we need to do two things. We need to put some new string here so we can bring that leaflet back down, attach it inside the heart so that they do this. And the other thing we need to do is if we look at the mitral valve in this section, it's normally meant to be D-shaped, but it turns circular because of this chronic leakage of the valve. And so we stitch in a band or a ring to reconfigure that D-shaped shape, so to speak. And so two parts to it, fix the leaflet, fix the ring. Now, when we're in theater, we do all of that, and how do we then know that it's going to work? Well, at the end of this video, there is another video which you will need to sign into um, YouTube to see because it's an operative video and you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. But in essence, once we've done the repair, we fill the ventricle with a salty solution called saline. And as the ventricle fills, the leaflet comes together and seals tightly if the valve has been repaired adequately. We can then draw a line along here. And the importance of this line is it tells us how deep the leaflets are what we call coapting, how deeply they meet. Now, this isn't going to be good enough. This might look like a good seal at the time of surgery, but this is going to leak again into the future, probably in a year or two, perhaps. But this, when we've got an overlap of maybe 0.8 centimeters or perhaps a centimeter across the whole length of the mitral valve, the whole length of the mitral valve, we find that that's going to give us the kind of durability that we want into the long term. So that's what we look for. And that's what the video at the end of this uh, video is going to show you if you decide to watch it. So in essence, repairing the heart valve is a very simple thing to do when you've been doing it a long time. We can do it through the keyhole very easily. In fact, you get a much better view through keyhole. And at the time of the surgery, we do a simple test to look at how well the leaflets are overlapping. And if they overlap by a centimeter or perhaps 0.8 of a centimeter, Along the whole length of that valve, we're going to get a durability well into the long term. We're talking 95 to 98% chance that that valve will still be working perfectly in 10 years' time, which really means if I had 100 people just like you, then 10 years from now, 95 to 98 of those people would have a valve still working perfectly. 2 to 5% might need another treatment but that's still better than a tissue valve in terms of durability and better than replacing the heart valve because repairing the valve preserves heart function. I hope that's helped you understand. Watch the next video, subscribe to the channel. There'll be lots more coming about uh, mitral valve disease in the future, both in terms of what is a treatment for mitral valve problems and also if you've had your mitral valve repaired or replaced, what you need to look out for in the future to stay healthy.